All right, so let's talk about another record marker. But first, let's go through some comments in the last video and show you why I need to make this video. Okay, first comment from the first Rickenbacker video, which if you missed that one, go back and watch it. It goes, why am I returning a $3,500 guitar? And I think I came up with pretty good reasons. And I will also explain why this one is also going back. So, first comment from Ian. Someone call the Wamblings. Well, Ian, I hope you call them. Because I got more whining to do. Next comment. Not gonna lie, as much as I adore my Rickenbacker, it took a crazy amount of tweaks and number of years to finally get it to play well. Years! It, guys, this is it's almost $4,000 after taxes. It shouldn't take years. This should, this should be like instantly good to play. This is ridiculous. Next one. Uh, Timmy Tummy, 1966. Did you not play it before buying it? I don't know why I have to even address this. Go to a guitar store and find me a rick on the wall that you can just try. Okay? It's, they, they aren't there. These are pretty much like made to order. I mean, obviously not completely, but a lot of the time these aren't just being produced out of a factory or just thrown out over and over like a squire or something that you can just go pick up and grab off of the wall to try it at your guitar store. Expe especially if you want a specific model, you, you have like a less than 1% chance of going to every guitar store in your area within an hour drive and not finding one of these. So, uh, sorry, couldn't try it. Uh. Okay, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Man 2307 Thanks for commenting. I do appreciate everyone's comments, by the way, whether they are positive or not, because I laugh at all of them no matter what you say. Hi, Chris. Chris next to each other. Your reason for not liking the guitar is a bit vague. It really wasn't vague at all. I went into quite good detail in every aspect of the guitar I didn't like, but that's okay. I'll go in a little deeper again. I was getting one of these and now I was a little more confused. Did you not try it first? And if you disliked it so much, then why did you buy it? Once again, buying one at the store. Uh, okay, Bruce Willies. I were buying a three and a half thousand guitar, you know what I would do? I'd try it first. You're all starting to look like you're all in the same idiot boat floating down the idiot river full of idiot motherfuckers. On to the next one. Okay, Cave Temp. Cave Temp, thank you. You're right, yours actually wasn't that mean. It says you're probably had the wrong strings for the model. Then goes into what strings I should be using for every single model of Rickenbacker that ever existed. So. Thank you for the comment. Thank you for the hard work and dedication to actually give some information to everybody instead of just saying like idiot or something. Uh, genuinely, that's, that's nice. Uh, the problem with that is, is it's from the factory. This is the strings that the people who build it and they set it up. They built this guitar and they set it up exactly the way that they built the guitar to be set up with. I didn't put new strings on it. I didn't have it set up. I had them do all the work because that's their product. This should come as they intended it to be played, which means their strings that they chose were on it, their string gauge was on it, and their setup was on it. And it sucked. Okay, this one is from Scotty Clerk, 6475. He said, dude, Xanax help. Don't do drugs, kids. They're very bad for you. Hey, this one's from Axe Sandal Elbows. Elbows? Oh, axes and elbows. <laughs> Uh, 414. Thank you for the comment. He said someone got up on the wrong side of the bed. Just brutal. <laughs> right, I was brutal. I'm not gonna lie. It was fun. I, I had fun working in front of shitty guitars. Uh, he said, I have two Rickenbackers. He names his models, all the jazz. Puts a big comment. I do appreciate that. Once again, I like hearing about your, your guitars and stuff. I think it's awesome. I've had people message me about guitars I own and ask me if I'd recommend them and uh, things I found, like price ranges, maybe things like that. And you can always feel free to message me on Instagram, Chris B underscore music. Um, you know, or my comment on here, I do reply to most every single one of my comments, literally. Uh, so if you have anything like that, I do appreciate it. But I didn't wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I woke up on the wrong side of my wallet. I paid $4,000 for a guitar, that sucked. So that was the reason, but I am glad that your ricks are nicer than my ricks. If you're lucky, mother effer. If I just swore in place, I'll show you why I'm holding it now. Okay, at Sal Gwyn. I think 
that's how you say it? What a whiner. Can't palm mute with the bridge cover on? Funny. I've been palm muting with Rickenbackers for over 40 years with the bridge cover on, so that there goes that theory. Uh, we're two different people. Maybe your hands are bigger and they fit on the bridge a little bit better. Maybe you like that style a little bit more for the architecture of your body. That's awesome. Once again, this was a review for me and how I like the guitar. If you want to make a video on how you like your guitar, you can do that. It's called starting a YouTube channel. Try it out. It's actually really fun to do. Although, editing videos takes forever. Uh, continues to say the controls aren't hard to figure out. I never had a Rickenbacker with an R tailpiece. Uh, and glad you have. Uh, glad you'd be glad to have the stamped metal one. So he's saying the R one sucks, which it does. But the other ones suck too. They both suck. So he's pretty much saying you're lucky that your instrument didn't suck more. But yet, it's telling me I'm whiny, even though he literally just said how the bridge piece also sucks. Thanks. Very Duck 3507, why buy it in the first place? Most of the criticism could have been identified prior to your purchase. <sighs> it becomes tiring to say the same thing over and over again, but. You'll never be able to know if you love your guitar until playing it. You know, it's like, you could think to yourself, Oh my god, I would love a PRS Silver Sky American Made. Well, I play one, and while they sound amazing, they're too big for my hands. I can't get my little tiny girl hands around the friggin' neck. So I don't like them. I like the SE. It's more comfortable for a smaller hand size. Now, would I like the pickups from the actual core model? Absolutely. And I do plan on one day swapping them out and putting them in my SE model. It will be a wonderful time, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend just because it's more expensive it's better, or don't necessarily pretend that everyone's isn't going to be different. So in our case, we have to try guitars as guitar players. We're never going to know by reading specs online that it's going to feel nice in the hand. And you think, oh, it has a thin C radius. I must like this. Oh, guitars with a thin, thin, uh, C thin radius. Like it's like you're never going to know. Every guitar maker makes them different. Every guitar maker shapes them different. Everyone does different fretwork and everything else that goes into building a guitar. Like, you gotta try it. And once again, you can't try it, so shut up. Trial 212. Thank you for the comment. As soon as you got to the point that you said that you couldn't figure out the controls, you lost all credibility that you could have had. No, I didn't. Because while I told you in that video, I understand the controls work. I'm not a moron. I understand which ones are the which ones are the tone, which ones are the volumes, how to use a switch, how to... I get it. I still think it's stupid. Like, if it just just because you understand something doesn't mean it's not fucking stupid. Like it's stupid. I don't like I don't like this. I don't like being on stage trying to find the tone that I want and having to twist 17 knobs, 17 different directions to get the perfect tone finding. But by the end of it, the guy that's doing the sound in the place doesn't even make the guitar sound good anyway. So it's a whole bunch of little bullshit. Okay? It's annoying. I don't like it. It's my opinion. If you like it, more power to you. You'd probably just sit in a studio all day and play to yourself. Or play with yourself. Soft. Okay, let me see. Soft light symphony band. Thank you for the comment. You're one of the newer comments. Almost all your complaints you could have educated yourself on prior. Prior, by the way, in all caps. Prior to buying and spending five by just spending five minutes on the internet. Gosh, mister. If only I would have known the internet exists. Would have saved me so much time. No, they fucking won it. Watch the last minute of my video, because I don't feel like putting the same fucking rant on. Fuck you. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you all for commenting. I appreciate it. It's a great time. It really is. So let's talk about this rig, though. Okay? So let's talk about this rig. Why am I returning this one? This is a completely different model. It is. I don't actually know what this model is. <laughs> uh, it's something, though. So hopefully one of you, yeah, I know one of you are going to say, Hey, you bought a guitar, you don't even know the model. Like, I don't know, it doesn't say it anywhere, and I forget exactly what it is. That's how many guitars I have. I play a lot of guitar. And mind you, I've had this one for more than two weeks. I've had this one for probably a month now. And, uh, it's going back and I hate it. And I'll tell you why. First of all, it came with a case. It's a great case. It's, it's literally phenomenal. It is a sweet case. It's got plenty of stuff. 
plenty of room to put your stuff into. It's very safe and secure feeling. It can lock up really nicely. It's got a good carrying handle. Everything about it is very nice. I genuinely love the case. It is a Rick and Bach guitar case. They make great cases. Stick to that, Rick. So, guitar though. Pick up, same sound as the last ones. They, they had nothing you know, to write home about. You're never gonna go, oh, you don't know, I got here to tell this guitar. Um, it was okay, you know, whatever. Body, way too big and uncomfortable to play. Um, but, you know, I, I could have seen that on the internet. I should have known. Uh, same thing with the knobs as last time. I don't like all the knobs. Knobs annoy me. I don't want to do this. This is too much. I just want, like, two knobs, maybe three knobs. Like, that? That's even too many knobs. And that's simpler than this. And that's too many. I don't like that. I like simple, you know? Like this. Simple. Nice. Now, mind you, this is my opinion. If you like knobs, and you like doing that, dude, cool. Remember, opinion, no opinion, no facts. So, don't like that. Bridge, better on this one. There's nothing covering it. I do like that. It's nothing special. It's genuinely really cheap metal. It looks, it looks like crap, honestly. Um, there's zero things that are special about this. I would never put this on a guitar. I would never change on a bridge for this. I would probably actually change this bridge if I cut this guitar, because... Quite frankly, it just looks like a stamped piece of metal that they just like pressed really quick with a machine, like slapping your guitar. Genuinely, see squires with like nicer bridges. Um, tailpiece, like the guy said earlier, did his name already because you're irrelevant. Um, it's the garbage. It's garbage tailpiece. It, it feels. I mean, listen to that. I mean, that's a pop can metal. I could, I, I could genuinely take this and just rip it in half if I wanted to. Like, it's genuinely that flimsy feeling. It feels horrible. It's like a Pepsi can. It's like, I mean, listen to that. It doesn't even sound like metal. It sounds like a piece of plastic. And quite honestly, it feels like a piece of plastic. Um, strap locks, or strap, um, whatever you call these things. Are these strap locks? No. They actually kind of look like they might be, though. But they don't have actual locks on them. But they, uh, they seem to do the job. They're, they're nice, or whatever. Um, you know. I don't know, I changed my guitars for strap locks, so it doesn't make a big difference to me. Um, let's talk about the neck. Neck. Uh, it looks nice. I like the I like the color. I, I don't like how much gloss is on there. I think it's way too much gloss. I don't like a lot of gloss on my necks. Um, I mean, it genuinely looks like they plastered gloss on here. It's it's actually kind of absurd on how much gloss is on there. The nut is just a piece of plastic. It looks like shit. It's super not lined up, by the way. Like... Like, there is a full-on, like, millimeter right here of fretboard that just, they didn't, they didn't try to, like, like, they did it just, it's really, really badly sized nut. Like, super badly sized nut. Um, the tuners, they're Rick tuners, so they suck. Um, they don't stay in tune. The guitar, I, I, I'm telling you, I've had three other people use this guitar so far, none of them can get the same tune. Every single person I've let play this literally told me that they hate this guitar. They said, I cannot believe how bad Rickenbacker guitars are. I said, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know why you got Why do I keep buying them? I don't know. Because my commenters say, you're an idiot. You should try another one. So, hey, hey. Here I am. Be happy. You know? Give you what you wanted. Um, also, they don't age their fretboards. Okay? What this means is when a company ages their fretboard, like PRS, for since ages their fretboards, which means that they take their fretboards and they allow them to shrink, which means over time, if you don't let that happen, your frets will pop off the sides. Well, you need to shrink it so that way when you put the frets in, they will be always that size with the neck and they will never protrude at the sides and cut your hand or ruin your clear coat on the side of your guitar. Oh no, what happened with the rick? Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm just exaggerating. All of these frets right here, all of them, all of them are popping out the side worse than almost any squire I've ever touched. It is so sharp. I'm scared right now that I'm going to start bleeding. The clear coat is popping off. You see these white dots? Those aren't the fret markers. That's the clear coat breaking off of the guitar. It's so bad. And on both sides. Look at this. You know that, that, that's not the fret, okay? That's not what you're seeing right there. That's the clear coat popping off 
because the neck is shrinking and the frets don't. Great job, Rick. That's like such an amateur move. Like, who does? That's what Squire does. That's what Epiphone does. And they even do a better job than this. I am not joking when I say this is one of the worst build qualities I've ever seen, other than the fact when Ivan has sent me a guitar with a broken neck. Yeah, hard to beat that one. So, uh, other than that so far, it's hollow. The whole body is hollow. It's cool. It's fine. The wood looks nice. It's a good, I like, I like the natural wood look. That's, once again, too much whacker around there. Um, but it looks nice. The match on the back is garbage. I don't know why. I just think they're cheap and idiotic. But this side's much darker than this side. They could have just taken this really nice looking quilted maple right here and plop! Put it on that side, had this real nice match, would have been gorgeous. What did they do though? They probably cheaped out and just cut a bunch of them without even thinking about it and just place them because they don't give a shit because they don't care about quality. And that's why I don't like Rickenbacker. Look at this nice skunk stripe, really nice looking, except for the fact that it's completely faded down here and it looks like they were grinding it, right? And they were, they were sitting here and they were trying to get the wood nice and smooth. You know what happened? They left the sawdust and then they clear coated over the sawdust. I'm not exaggerating. This one here that you see all looks like sawdust inside of here. Up here, fine. Right here, bad. Right here, bad. It's it's horrible. I mean, it looks so, it looks so bad. It looks so bad. It's un, it's unbelievable how shitty this guitar is. I mean, and it's made in America. And, and and gosh darn it, guys, I'm a proud American. And I'll tell you, God bless America. And I love a good American-made guitar. I have a Martin. It's one of my favorite guitars of all time. I have a Sovereign behind me, made in 1960. Incredible guitar. I genuinely love American-made guitars for the most part. This one, this is bad. I don't understand how an American company can put out a almost $4,000 guitar that has this many issues. That is literally an unplayable piece of junk that you hang on your wall as an art piece that genuinely doesn't look good enough to pull off that job itself. So that's why I'm returning it. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Please subscribe. I do appreciate it genuinely because I'd love to make money doing this one day. I only need 500 subscribers to start doing that and I'm already at 350. So if we can get those numbers up, people, let's make it happen. Let me also know below what kind of guitar you want to see next. I have plenty here that I can go over along with more. Thankfully, I have good friends that have a lot of guitars that will let me use them. I also have other musical equipment if you want to see that as well, including amplifiers, pianos, keyboards, oh my, oh my, even an electric drum set I've never done a video on, although I probably should because it's really nice. So, thanks, Rick. Haha, <laughs> go fuck yourself.